Chapter 10 Details That night, Lemus slept in a small, bare room with only a bed and a desk in it. To get to his room, he had to walk through another room with two beds in it. Later, he realised that the two men who slept there were guards. In fact, these guards were never far away from him while he was in the farmhouse. The next morning, one of the guards brought some bread and bad coffee for breakfast. Lemus looked out of the window while he was having breakfast. The farmhouse was on the top of a high hill, and below it, Lemus could see hills covered with tall trees. There were no houses, and a long way below, in a valley, he could see the road. There was no sound. Fiedler came into the room. Good morning, he said with a smile. Finish your breakfast, and then we will talk. I've told Peters everything that I know, replied Lemus. Oh, no, you haven't, replied Fiedler. You've only given us one piece of information that we didn't know. I'm talking about Rolling Stone, of course, and I'm sure that you can tell us more. He took Lemus outside, and they went for a walk down the road into the valley, and then along a path through the forest. Fiedler asked lots of questions. He asked about the building in Cambridge Circus in London, and about the people who worked there. He asked about their families and where they lived. Most of all, he wanted to know about why they worked for the circus. What do they believe in? What is their philosophy? He asked. I don't know, said Lemus. They don't believe in anything. They're just people. What makes them do these jobs, then? asked Fiedler. He sounded confused. I don't know, said Lemus. Then he added, I suppose they don't like communists. I see, said Fiedler. We kill people because we believe in something. It must be harder to kill people if you don't have a philosophy that you believe in. I don't know, replied Lemus, and I don't care. He suddenly sounded tired. They stopped while Fiedler gave Lemus a cigarette and lit it for him. About an hour after they had left the farmhouse, they reached the top of a hill. Looking back, Lemus could see the farmhouse across the valley. He was enjoying the walk. We'll sit down for a moment, said Fiedler, and then we must go back. Tell me more about Rolling Stone. Large amounts of money were deposited in banks in Copenhagen and Helsinki. What did you think they were for? I told Peters, replied Lemus. They were payments to an agent, probably behind the Iron Curtain. Why did you think so? Well, they were very big payments, and it was very difficult to make them, replied Lemus. And, of course, control was involved, too. What do you think that the agent did with the money? asked Fiedler. I don't know, said Lemus. I don't even know if the money was collected. I just went to Denmark and Finland and deposited the money in the banks, and then I came back. What names did you use, and when did you go to each country? asked Fiedler. In Copenhagen I was Robert Lang, and in Helsinki I was Stephen Bennett. And when did you go to each country? asked Fiedler. I went to Denmark on the 15th of June of this year, and to Finland on the 24th of September, replied Lemus. Did the banks ever write to you? I don't know, 
If they did, the letters went to control, I suppose, replied Lemus. You didn't know much, said Fiedler. So it is possible that the Rolling Stone payments were to a double agent in the GDR? No, said Lemus. I told Peters that's impossible. I was in charge, and I knew about all the agents in East Berlin. Fiedler did not reply. Instead, he went on, You could help us to find out whether anyone withdrew any of the money from those banks. You could write a letter to each of the banks and ask for a current statement. We could send the letters from an address in Switzerland. How would that help you? asked Lemus. If the money was withdrawn, we will know the date when the agent was there. That might be useful, said Fiedler. You're dreaming, Fiedler, replied Lemus. You'll never find the person who the payments were for. You don't even know if he's an East German. Fiedler looked out over the valley for a few moments before he spoke again. We know that Rolling Stone was an operation against us, he said. Lemus realized that Control's plan was working. Fiedler believed in Rolling Stone. All right, he said. I'll send the letters. <laughs>